The New York Knicks are facing some adversity after Julius Randle had a season-ending shoulder surgery. For months, we've speculated on when he'll be back, but now we know he won't be back this season. I still don't think the Knicks should be slept on because they still have a very deep roster who I believe can compete with anybody in the Eastern Conference. Just as long as everybody else stays healthy. Mitchell Robinson and OG Ananobi returning to action are key for the Knicks. Ananobi may have not found his rhythm on offense yet, but he is getting the job done on defense. Watch out when he finds his rhythm again on offense. When Ananobi was traded from Toronto earlier this season, his impact was immediately felt as one of the better 3 and D players in the league. He was on the all-defensive second team just last season and made a great first impression by doing such a great job guarding Anthony Edwards in his Knicks debut. You wouldn't know if you only looked at the box score, but those of us who actually watched that game know Ant-Man struggled when OG was guarding him. Ananobi only played 19 games as a Nick, and the Knicks are 16-3 in those 19 games as of the recording of this video. Four of those wins were without Julius Randle. It's also great for the Knicks to have Mitchell Robinson's rim protection rebounding back. Even with all the injuries the Knicks have had to endure this season, they are still currently the fourth seed and only two games back of the second seed and are top 10 in both offense and defense. Since the All-Star break, the Knicks are top 6 in defense. They have a next man up mentality that has kept them afloat all season. When speaking of their next man up mentality, with Mitchell Robinson missing significant time, Isaiah Hardenstein has risen to the challenge ever since becoming a starter, doing such a great job filling in as the rim protector that Mitchell Robinson's supposed to be when he is healthy to the point where the Knicks are 31-20 and 20 without Big Mitch. Although Robinson is the better rebounder, Hardenstein, while not a great scorer, is a better one than Robinson and a better passer, too. Of course, it's more ideal to have both Mitchell Robinson and Isaiah Hardenstein's rim protection at any point in the game, and the fact that both are available now does wonders for the Knicks defensively. One huge reason why I don't think the Knicks should panic over the loss of Julius Randle is his playoff woes. He has been important to the Knicks' regular season success as he was the best player on the Knicks when they made their first playoff appearance since 2013 three years ago and has made three of the last four all-star games. However, it's been a much different story come playoff time. He has shot under 40% from the field for his career in the playoffs with his scoring averages being well below what they are in the regular season while also turning the ball over too much averaging almost four per game in 15 career playoff games. The Knicks also have a franchise player in Jalen Brunson playing even better than when he had his breakout year last season as a guy who can score from everywhere on the court. He's also proven he can deliver in clutch situations. Brunson is easily the best point guard the Knicks have had since Walt Clyde Frazier, and he even deserves some MVP votes. If only SGA and Luka weren't having the seasons they're having, Brunson would definitely make the All-NBA first team, but at least he should be making the second team. Brunson's defense is also underrated. Him being the smallest guy on the floor does limit him to some extent on that end, but he's not a total liability because he is a good communicator, is capable of going over screens, and he's second in the NBA in taking charges. Aside from Brunson, Dante DiVincenzo, or should I call him 3 Vincenzo, has had a career year setting a franchise record for most threes made in a season. He also has great defensive instincts that have allowed him to be ninth in the NBA in deflections per game. Perhaps playing alongside two of his college teammates who he won two national championships with has given him a boost mentally. DiVincenzo, Brunson, and Josh Hart already had chemistry with each other before they even made their NBA debuts. After playing Playing for three different teams in the last two years, DiVincenzo is on a four-year deal now, so knowing he's not going anywhere anytime soon may also be doing wonders for his confidence. DiVincenzo and Ananobi are also a great fit for Brunson, who does tend to dribble a lot because they're much more capable of playing off the ball than RJ Barrett is. You may be asking, what have Dante DiVincenzo or OG Ananobi ever done for their previous teams in the playoffs? DiVincenzo only played three games for the 
Bucks in the first round when they won their championship and Ananobi wasn't even on the playoff roster when the Raptors won their championship. They were really young back then and didn't get the opportunity to flourish. DiVincenzo may have had bad numbers for last year's entire playoffs with the Warriors. However, he scored 16 points in 25 minutes to the game the Warriors were eliminated in and DiVincenzo has proven to be a great fit on the Knicks. Let's also keep in mind how well Jalen Brunson played in last year's playoffs and it was Randall that let him down against the Heat. Another guy to watch out for is Boyan Bogdanovich. He averaged 20 points per game for a god-awful Detroit Pistons before coming to New York and for most of his time in New York he has struggled. He has been better the last four games though averaging 13 points per game on 57% from the field and 41% from three. Of course 57% from the field is probably not sustainable for him but as long as he's any kind of a threat to be an instant offense guy off the bench that should be enough to help the Knicks make some noise in the playoffs. Then there's Deuce McBride whose numbers on the season may not jump out at you but looking at the bigger picture since the Knicks made that trade with the Raptors McBride has averaged 11 points per game while shooting 42% from three and has played great defense. He's especially stepped it up since March averaging almost 14 points per game and this month he's averaging 15 points per game. Before I go on to the Knicks potential matchups I also want to quickly touch up on Precious Achua and Josh Hart. Achua is a guy that the Knicks brought in along with OG Ananobi from Toronto and although Achua isn't exactly a guy that will score a whole lot he's versatile on defense and he's a high motor guy and his 7-2 wingspan is a big plus for the Knicks on defense. As for Josh Hart he can be hit or miss offensively but he's always going to bring it on defense and he's one of the better rebounding guards in the NBA. What definitely shouldn't be overlooked about Josh Hart is the fact that he's leading the league in loose balls recovered. If the Knicks get a top three seed and they're right there just the magic own the tiebreaker because of head-to-head -head matchups once they get past the first round they could be facing the Milwaukee Bucks who are coached by the guy we all know for not having led his team past the second round in 12 years. Back when I made that video on Doc Rivers I said I still expect the Bucks to finish with one of the top seeds in the East and here they are now at the second seed but they are three and seven in their last 10 games. Sure Damian Lillard was hurt for some of that time but he also just played poorly against the Knicks. Doc Rivers has also emphasized mental toughness for the playoffs in recent interviews. Oh, his team's not having that in the playoffs and how he's been doing a lot of finger pointing since taking over for the Bucks head coaching job. Yeah, this sounds like such a familiar story. Um, as a travel staff, not talking players, um, we may have to do something different there too because something's missing and um, everybody seems happy, you know? Um, but except for me after a game, you know, and so I just think we, we we're, we're doing something wrong and we have to figure that out. One thing I know the Knicks have based on all the injuries they've had to overcome this year is mental toughness. If the season ended today, the Knicks would play the Cavs in the first round. Not only did the Knicks beat them in last year's playoffs, they were 2-1 on the season against them this year, and the last time they played each other, the Knicks were without OG Ananobi and Mitchell Robinson. The Knicks also overcame Jalen Brunson, injuring his knee in the opening minute of that game and not returning for the rest of the game. Or if the Magic dropped back down to the fourth or fifth seed, the Knicks would be facing a team they lost three out of their four regular season matchups against, which is why the Magic owned the tiebreaker, but that doesn't tell the whole story. The first matchup came before the Knicks revamped their roster. The second time, Jalen Brunson didn't play. Then the Knicks were without OG Ananobi, Dante DiVincenzo, Julius Randle, and Isaiah Hartenstein. The one game the Knicks did beat the Magic in, they were without Julius Randle, OG Ananobi, and Mitchell Robinson. Let's see how the Magic do when all those guys are healthy well except for Randall of course but at least everyone else if the Knicks are the fourth seed and face the Celtics in the second round or if they face them in the conference finals if they end up as the third seed I'm not saying the Knicks will beat the Celtics the Celtics 100% should be favored however don't expect this to just be a cakewalk for Boston the Knicks may have lost all four of their matchups against the Celtics this year but let's dig a little deeper than that three of their losses to the Celtics came early in the season before they made their trade with the Raptors. Their latest loss was without OG 
Ananobi and Julius Randle. The Knicks have one more game against the Celtics, which they may not have Randle for, but should have Ananobi back for. Jason Tatum has had two 30 plus point games against the Knicks this year, but Ananobi did not play in any of those games. Let's see what he can do when OG is back healthy and guarding him. You may be asking about the Philadelphia 76ers as a potential first round matchup as they are currently the seventh seed, but only two and a half games behind the Knicks and are on a five game winning streak with Joel Embiid coming back from injury. The Knicks have only faced Embiid once this season, and that's a game the Knicks creamed the Sixers in. Unless Embiid finally realizes that he's so much more effective establishing himself down low like a center is supposed to do, rather than settling out on the perimeter, the Knicks should have no problem handling Embiid. Embiid may have scored 30 in the one game he played against the Knicks this year, but the Knicks also held him to 43% from the field and just two fourth quarter points in their one matchup. Embiid also had six turnovers in that game. If Embiid was clamped by Al Horford, who's three inches shorter and seven years older in last year's playoffs, Mitchell Robinson and Isaiah Hardenstein should at the very least hold their own against Embiid. What about Tyrese Maxey? The one game the Sixers beat the Knicks in, Maxey didn't play. Maxey did score 35 in a game the Knicks won, but also had four turnovers and zero fourth quarter points. The Knicks were up 10 going into that fourth quarter and won by 14. The one game Embiid played against the Knicks this year, Maxey scored 27 points, but most of his damage was done in the first half, and he also shot one from seven from three in that game. If the Knicks make it to the finals, unfortunately, I don't see them beating the Nuggets, even if Julius Randle was healthy. This season would still be a huge success by just making it to the finals, which they haven't been to since 1999, or even the conference finals, which they haven't been to since 2000. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. That would be much appreciated. Consider subscribing and turning on notifications so you never miss another video. If you're a new subscriber, welcome to the team. If you're already subscribed, thanks so much as always. Links to my social media are down below if you want to see my more immediate reactions to what's going on in the sports world. If you'd like to see my most recent video and the one that YouTube recommends, both are up above. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.